Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to do a little experiment together and I have a confession for you. And I'm going to start with the confession because it kind of leads to the point of the experiment. I play a plectrum that costs $50. Okay, I've said it out loud. 50, five, zero, 50 US dollars for one plectrum. I've been using this said plectrum for nearly two years. The one pick. I've got three. So actually, I shouldn't say it's one, I only ever have one out at a time, but I've got three of them in case one goes missing. And I really, really like it. I really think it's worth it. And actually, I've stopped losing my picks, which is an interesting kind of byproduct of having such a ridiculously expensive pick. I was telling a friend of mine that I played this pick and it cost 50 bucks, and he thought I was an idiot and was asking why I would do such a silly thing. And there's a couple of reasons. The first one is one that I can't prove to you, which is how it feels. Okay, because the plectrum is our connection between our hand and the strings. It plays a, a, a much bigger role than you might think in the sound that you draw out of the instrument. And uh, for me, the, the feeling of this pick, the pick, uh, the, the, the pick I'm talking about is called a blue chip brand. I'm not exactly sure what it's made of, but it feels excellent. It's just, it's kind of grippy, but also slippery enough for me to feel like I can move it around. It's like the perfect amount of slippery and grippy, uh, grippery, shall we call it? Um, it's just amazing. I, 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 I really genuinely rate it really highly. I really like the feeling of it. Uh, it's the big jazz, it's a blue chip jazz. Uh, it's got 50 written on it, which is the thickness, but I can't remember what that is um, measuring, to be completely honest. It's not 0.5 of a millimeter, because it's, uh, could be half a mil. I'm not sure. I have to look that up. But it's anyway, it's the thickness is 50. I've got my initials stamped on the back. It's one of the things that you can do when you pay 50 bucks for a pick. They'll put your initials on the back and make sure none of your mates steal it. Um, but as well as it feeling really good, which I think is almost the most important bit, arguably, I think that it sounds better and it sounds different. It sounds smoother, not as scratchy, seems to make the sound thicker. I seem to notice the th thickness of the sound on electric guitar but I'm never really sure I'm, I might end up doing an electric guitar test again as well but I figured the best way to do this test to see if I really can hear that it's better I thought I'd use an acoustic guitar so I'm using my froggy bottom acoustic guitar I've uh, mic'd it with two microphones uh, uh, Neumann U87 and an AKG451 uh, the Neumann pointing kind of diagonally into the uh, in toward the, the place where the fretboard meets the sound hole and the 451 pointing at the fingers. Uh, they're both going through Neve uh, 1073 preamps and I've used a little bit of Distressor which is a compressor uh, but I'm using the Universal Audio um, plug-in version of the Distressor. Just a little touch of compression. So that's the sound and then what I've done is played the same thing. I've got a metronome click going on. I've played exactly the same thing with each of the picks. Three different things, in fact, a, a kind of a strummy thing, and then a thing where I'm picking out notes uh, individually, like arpeggiating the chords, and another thing where I just play a single note with the rhythm. Just, I was just, it, it's, these kind of things are as much for me as they are for you. Like I wanted to do the test for myself to see, do I really feel that they're, it's very different? And I figured, well, actually, probably there are other people wondering the same sort of thing. I should point out that there's not really a best pick. There's a best pick for any given situation. So even though this is kind of like my main pick, there are other picks that I frequently use as well, depending on the sound I'm getting, because they do sound different. Now, whether they sound better, I'm not sure. They sound different depending on different situations. But the feeling of them, so for me, this one feels best. Now, what I thought I'd do for the experiment with the picks is I just picked 10 of the, the picks that are commonly found in my little pick tray thing on the studio table. So this blue chip is the one that I'm using most of all, but I'll talk about the other 10 in random order. So I'm not going to tell you the order. If you want to find out the order that I'm using them for the actual little demo thing, you need to click on the link in the description. It'll take you over to the website. Um, the Jazz 3 pick is one of them. Uh, the Jazz 3 is the pick that I used for most of my life, I guess. I started using them when I was probably 19 or 20 years old and I played them up until I got the, I keep throwing them all over the place, uh, until I got the blue chip. I was using the Jazz 3 nearly all the time, definitely for electric guitar. When I play acoustic guitar, I generally use this uh, Jim Dunlop 
uh, Tortex, the orange Tortex. Uh, I actually have my own Justin Guitar branded ones now, which are essentially the same material, but uh, the Tortex is the kind of the common one, so I thought I'd use uh, that particular one. Uh, my eyesight's really dodgy. I think it's six point uh, six zero millimeters, um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're a really great pick. I really like them on acoustic guitar. They're just a little bit clickier um, than the than the blue chip, but I like it and I still use that a lot. The other pick that I use a lot is the the Jim Dunlop USA Nylon. It's a uh, point three eight millimeters. Very very thin pick. Very very clicky. It's got a lot of this kind of clicky sound going on when you're strumming which can be really really effective so that's that's one of the the, the ones that i chose for this little test um i went for a thicker tortex as well um the thickness has rubbed off it's the purple tortex i'm sure i can look it up on the internet and i'll i'll put on the screen uh, what the thickness is but uh these are you know another pick that i've used on and off uh you know when because even though i mostly used the jazz three i did experiment with other picks and other pick sizes to see if the bigger pick was going to help me on my i've never been very good at picking like fast picking so i've often tried to blame the pick and uh, funnily enough it wasn't the pick it was my technique that was poor um another one that i found in the pick box that i've used a bit is the uh, jim dunn nylon 0.6 millimeters i thought i said that the other, no yeah one of them was 0.6 so the, the other tortex anyway this is the 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 gray kind of nylon one it's not super thick, but it's definitely it's heavier again than the than the paperweight one. Um, I found as well this Fender Thin, and I know a lot of guys use Fender Thin on acoustic guitar. Uh, they've been around a long time. I used to have these ones uh, quite a lot. They are very thin. They don't have quite as much nice click for me as the as the, the nylon uh, the Dunlop nylon ones, but they're a very well respected, nice pick. Um, I've got this one, and actually, you know what? I don't even know what it's called. I've got a feeling somebody sent it to me. It's got a picture of a dragon. Or I'm going to say at a guess that it's something called a drag dragon stone or dragon heart or something. Again, I'll, I'll look this up. I should have researched it a little bit before I filmed the video. Hey, but I didn't. Um, somebody sent it to me ages ago. I don't really get on with it, I'll be honest with you. I, f I find it a bit, it's got a bit too much scrape as it goes over the string. It's kind of got its own thing going on. It's a little bit different sounding than any of the other picks. Um, I like the fact that it's got like a really round bit on one corner, a slightly pointier bit, and then a really pointy bit. I think that's kind of interesting, but I never use it. It's just one that I thought I'd throw in the mix because it's kind of interesting. Um, then I've got a one millimeter thick nylon. I went through a little period of using these probably 10 years ago. Um, not exactly sure why, but uh, I've got a big bag of them lying around still. Quite like them. They're kind of not stiff enough for me for, for doing the like the thick pick but hey i mean it's all it's a real personal preference this pick and i'm not trying to tell you which one you should play or what you shouldn't play i'm just kind of thought i'd do a little test and see what worked and what didn't and lastly i've got this it's another jim dunlop one and i don't know what i can't remember what it's called big oh it's a big stubby is what it's called these were all trendy i guess in the mid, late 90s i think they sound really plasticky and brittle i like them but again, they're a really popular one and it's kind of different to the other one. So I thought I'd throw that into the mix as well. So, so what I'm going to do now is play you the little examples and I'll put on the screen the pick number 1 to 10. And if you want to find out what pick is number 1 and what one's number 2, etc., then you can click that link in the description to take you over to the website. So I really hope you enjoy this. Good luck guessing. I must admit, I probably wouldn't be able to guess many of them. And I don't think that I'd even be able to spot my $50 pick in amongst them right so in a way i kind of feel like i'm maybe i'm not in love with the sound of it but i'm definitely in love with the feeling of it and i think that's important so if you get a chance to go to your local store and they happen to stock blue chip picks might be worth going and trying one and seeing it's definitely not something for beginners if you're a beginner guitar player it's not going to speed up your d to a chord changes right but if you've been playing a, a, a while and you, you're interested in exploring this kind of thing then it's definitely worth getting one under your fingers because they do feel f f to me significantly different to a regular pick so i hope you enjoy this and i'll see you for plenty more very soon well, one. Number 
three. Number four. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Seven. Four. Number five. 
Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel if you dig what I do and remember there are hundreds, over 1500 lessons now for free over on the website so do go and check it out if you haven't been over there for a while. There's some really cool features about to drop as well. So I'll see you for plenty more guitar lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves people. Bye bye.